Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain. Build the board. Alrighty then. So in this video, I'm going to talk about building a board. In a previous video, I talked about breaking the board. And in Yu-Gi-Oh, as the Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, all I have to say is that building a board is much harder than breaking it. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. So, when it comes to building a board in Yu-Gi-Oh, we need it all revolves around three points. One, archetype and goal. Two, complement effects. And three, linchpin checkpoint. Let's go with the first point. One, archetype and goal. When it comes to building your board in Yu-Gi-Oh, you will need the end goal of the archetype that you are playing. It is very important to realize that whatever deck you are playing in Yu-Gi-Oh, it will have an end goal, it will have an end result. And you need to discover what its end result is, what is the ideal board that the archetype you are playing wants to make. Whatever deck you're making, you need to see the ideal end result that you are ending on, that you want to end on, that you want to build at the end. And then you want to construct your deck in such a way to facilitate that ideal board. Okay? And it's, that's just relatively simple. And so we build upon that on our foundation. And that is how we take our first steps in building the board. Let's go to the second point. Second point. Complement effects. So... What do I mean by complement effects? In Yu-Gi-Oh, when you're building an ideal board, you're going to need effects that complement the, the original effects that you have in the archetype that you are playing to build that ideal board. Your ideal board, obviously, as I said with the point number one, you will need to have the end goal. The end goal being the desired board that you want to make, the ideal, okay? And the complementary effects that you have put in your deck at this point in time will help you to achieve that end goal. So let me give an example of some complementary effects. So I'm going to talk about a deck I think I've put on the channel before, which I like to call Seven Legacies. All these seven archetypes, how do we have them complement each other? Well, allow me to explain. Keep it short. Keep it simple. We first start with a Chalice Normal Monster. That Chalice Normal Monster will then go into Crowned, will then be used for a Link Summon to Imduk. The effect of Guard Dragon Gamadis will now activate in my hand, allowing it to special summon itself simply when a normal monster leaves the field. And I'm going to stop right there. That simple example is a demonstration of what a complement effect looks like. A complement effect, as you can see here, is an effect that immediately activates when, a, when, a, when actions are done to further the game state for you to go to your ideal board. Now, complementary effects are extremely important, I would say, in building boards in Yu-Gi-Oh. And I highly advise, as you Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, when you're building a board in Yu-Gi-Oh, and obviously with a deck that you've built, add a lot of complementary effects into your deck. Basically, make sure that the effects you have in the deck or the cards you have in your deck complement the archetype that you have. So if the archetype likes to sp uh, special summon from the hand, then have an effect that when a, a monster is special summoned from the hand, it this card will special summon itself as well. These sort of effects that complement each other can facilitate quick board building and ideal scenarios. This can also uh, lead to a lot of um, having bait cards so that if, if your opponent goes to negate one of your cards, you're still able to build your board effectively, even with negates or any sort of 
hurdles that you face when your opponent is trying to interact with you. That is why I would say complementary effects are extremely important and should definitely be used in deck building for building the ideal board. Let's go to the third and final point. And we have our final point with the third point, linchpin checkpoint. When it comes to building a board in Yu-Gi-Oh, you're going to need a linchpin, which will be your checkpoint. Now, building bo a board in Yu-Gi-Oh is intensive and can get quite complicated. And so why do I say you need a linchpin and a checkpoint? There's going to be a time when your opponent will interact with you. And as you build the board, your opponent is always interacting with you. And there'll come a time when they'll negate a key card. And how will you proceed to rebuild the board to and go back to your end board? How will you proceed when your pathway has been destroyed? You will need a compass, a guiding light to help you rebuild the board and get back to your, as I would say, ideal end board. So how do we get back to that? We're going to have trouble in our board building. Our opponent has negated a key card and we don't know how to proceed. So what is the linchpin in uh, the archetype that I have? It's Girsu, the Orcust Mech Knight. First of all, Girsu is an Orcust card, but it is also a Mech Knight card. Does not sound too bad. And why is it the linchpin for me is that I can use it to pivot into my chalice combo or or go into the mechanite combo or from that i can go into the into the orchest combo or i can go into crusadia combo i can go into various combos and various lines and i can rebuild a previous board that was negated or i can restart things that were broken in lines that's really convenient. This is where the linchpin checkpoint comes in. The checkpoint there means that whatever has happened during the duel, whatever interaction that my opponent has, has with me at this point in time, I know as long as I go to or summon the Girsu uh, mo August monster, then I can get back to back on track and rebuild the board and go back to building my ideal board. Now, Whatever this means for you, when you're building your deck and you're wanting to build the ideal board, you're going to need to design in your deck a linchpin card. The card in your deck that you know that whatever happens, that you will have this on your back foot, knowing that if you summon this card, you can use it to go forward, or you can use it to go backward, or you can use it to rebuild what you have lost with the interaction that your opponent has done to you at this point in time. Maybe they have negated a key card into in building your your combo. Maybe they have uh you know stopped you setting a special counter trap that would allow you to interact with them on 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 their turn. All these things matter and that is why having the linchpin card, whatever it is, it can be a monster, spell or a trap Whatever linchpin card you have in your deck, make sure that you get one or you create a one. If you don't have a linchpin in your deck or in your deck construction, make sure you create one. Linchpin checkpoints are very important. And that's all I've got to say at this point. Let's enter the conclusion. So we're here at the conclusion. And what, and what have I got to say here? Well, as Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei, I'm just going to say, when it comes to building a board, it involves these three things. It involves the first point, an archetype end goal. The second point, which involves, um, what does it involve? Complementary effects. And the third point, the linchpin checkpoint. Now, all these three things will allow you to build a board successfully. There's going to be some times where it's not always going to be successful. Uh, maybe you will be overwhelmed by the amount of things that happen to you. But no, having these three key points 
being your guiding principle can allow you to build a board successfully and realize that building a board is much harder than breaking one, than breaking the board. So that's all I've got to say when it comes to this point. But one thing I want to reiterate is that when it comes to building a board in Yu-Gi-Oh, the big takeaway here is that you're going to need some knowledge, okay? Make sure you study your deck. Make sure that you know your deck that you're playing inside and out. You need to live and breathe your deck. You need to know the deck you're playing inside and out. You need to know it intimately. And once you know your deck intimately, it is then you will know how to build the ideal board. For you to build an ideal board or you to have the ideal vision, you're going to need to know your deck intimately to get to the ideal vision. And once you can get to your ideal vision or your ideal board, then you're going to need to study your deck even further to discover or look for complementary effects that complement your deck's playstyle. And after you can complement your deck's playstyle, we're then going to go to the third point and you're going to need to find a linchpin checkpoint in your deck, right? Where is the linchpin in your deck? Find it. If you don't have one, create it. The point that I'm trying to make here is that to facilitate building a board requires intimate knowledge of you and your deck and of you knowing your deck like the back of your hand. The moment you know your deck like the back of your hand is the moment that you can successfully build an ideal board. And with that being said, I will end this video and put it to a close. But as a Yu-Gi-Oh sensei, there'll be other topics that we will talk about. And I hope to see you soon in a future video. That's all I've got to say now. Toodles! We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.